Greetings fellow interlopers, it's Taylor, and I've got volume two for you on ideas that might make your bass suck a little less. Now let's be clear, I'm not telling you your bass sucks, I obviously haven't seen your bass. But you're watching this video, so I'm gonna assume that there's room for improvement. And the good news is you don't need any fancy glitching to do these. Now I will show you a couple tricks that use as a very basic glitch, if you're so inclined, but you don't have to. Okay, let's dive in. Who does not love a pool party? Cannonball! So on a lot of my bases that have water, I gotta put a pool in. All right, it's a beautiful evening here at Prima Navarium. And this is a nice little Earth-like planet I found for this demo. You wanna look for shoreline that's like this. It makes it look the most natural in my opinion. And we're gonna use a wall and we're gonna figure out how high we want the water line in our pool. So if you imagine a floor being placed at the top of this wall, that's where the walkway, the deck around the pool is gonna be. So here, obviously, that's way too high for the water line. And if we move it too far inland, the water level is gonna be way too low. So the key is just finding a magic height that's not too high, not too low. I usually go around a third of a stone wall height for my level. You want to get it kind of close to the top, but if it gets too high, you'll end up swimming when you're trying to walk around. I mean, the water does look a little low if you look on this wall, but say we want to lower our deck and make the water appear to be higher. I'm going to go into free placement mode now. And here I can kind of use this to see where I want my adjustment to be. So if we lower our floor just a bit to make the water appear a little higher, we'll free place a piece of uh, flooring there and try it again. Now, see if that's our walkway, then we're gonna put our wall to define the pool we're gonna go back into snap. And so this looks good. It's about a small wall height. But let me show you if you get too close to the surface of the water when you're building. And yeah, the floor is actually above the water, but the game mechanics make you swim when you're too close. So you will have to tweak the walkway around your pool until you get the water as high as you can while still being able to walk around it. Using the tiles that I've got down right now, the level looks really low, but hopefully we can find a happy medium like we had before. This is where I go into free placement again and reach a level where we won't be swimming, but it, we don't want it to look super low either. And throw walls on here, just so you know where the water level is gonna be. See, the water level's too high still. So just play around with the height until you get the water as high as you can without swimming around it. Okay, I think we finally found a height that's good here. Trust me, this is probably the most tedious part of this whole process. After this, it, it's all smooth sailing. So let's use this level. And since I don't have a base, I'm not really, I don't really have a preference on how this pool is gonna be angled. So what I've got here, we'll just use this. And now we can lay our flooring around to define how big we want our pool. And don't worry about the terrain. We're going to get rid of that here in a second. But for demonstration, we are going to go with this. 
it's a little square, but hey. Now we're gonna throw our walls up and you can get rid of the terrain now or later, doesn't really matter. I'll get rid of it here. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and place our walls in. And you could use a different look. I mean, you could use metal for the sides. You could use metal for the top, a little warm, but, or you could use alloy walls for the sides of the pool to give it a modern pool look, space pool. I like stone or wood just because they're more natural. So let's finish that up with stone. And it might be easier sometimes just to go underwater and build and you can kind of get a better idea. Now this is where you could get a little creative and have varying depths of your pool. You could do a deep end like that pool at the beginning of the video. But here, I'm just going to keep it all one level. No deep end here. And once you get your walls and your flooring in, this will give you a much better idea of what terrain needs to go still. And you might even hop in just to get a, a look. And here we've got some terrain that needs to go. Sometimes the terrain won't go away, then in that case, you just delete your floor or your wall wherever it's poking out and then delete it and then put your wall or floor back. Sometimes it doesn't fully go. So this is essentially about as simple as a pool gets. The next base idea is everybody's favorite patio accessory, string lights. So let's get into how we build these. All right, so let's say we've got a little patio that we want to make some string lights for. Your first idea may be, well, hey, I'll build a wall and we'll stick some string lights on the wall and then just delete the wall, right? Well, if you try that, you'll quickly realize that's not going to work because when you place string lights on this wall and then you delete the wall, you know what's gonna happen probably. All of the string lights disappear. But here's the cool thing. So let's put a wall back up here. And the alternative to this is using a wire. So let's go back in. It doesn't really matter how you get to the wire, but I'm gonna have my string light ready. So here's our pill light, a white pill light. And go into the wire and just run it along the wall. So the string lights will be hung from corner to corner, meaning that when you get from one corner to the other, now just run a wire to emulate the wire that you would see on the string lights themselves, even though this will be deleted. But this wire is gonna be our guide to how we wanna run the string lights. So now go into your pill light and start placing right on the wire. And you've got a pretty good amount of leeway on how high you can adjust the string light before it actually hits the wall and not the wire. I'm going extremely fast just to show. Okay, so now we have these kind of in a drooping look, right? We can delete the walls and now we can delete the wires and look. And lo and behold, our pill lights have remained. Now for these, I like to go to the other side and actually use the flat edge of these pill lights to place another pill light so it's more of a rounded look. Now on my last couple streams we talked about how to resize base parts, parts that wouldn't ordinarily be able to be resized like these pill lights here. So let's quick review, if you haven't been a part of those streams, let me quick review with you how you would make these lights smaller. And yes, you could make them bigger if you like, but in this particular case, I think the pill lights look really good as string lights when they're smaller. So let's take a base part, and it's the only thing you have to remember is you need to select a base part that is resizable, like this wall light. 
So if I press left and right on my D-pad, you can see that I'm able to resize it. That's the only thing you got to keep in mind here. So we're going to go into our wire and then pull it over. The length does not matter. Now, before you place it again with the right trigger, you're going to go back to your Y or triangle. And you can see we've got that still stored in the cache. And I'm going to move this all the way down or very small, not all the way down. And so like before, we're going to hit triangle or Y along with the right trigger at the same time. And hopefully we get a smaller wire. Okay, we got it. That might take a couple tries to get the hang of it. But if you just try to press Y or triangle at the same time as right trigger, you'll get it. So now that we have this wire, you may say, well, that's just a wire. What's going on? Well, let's take a look at this wire. You can see that that's not a normal wire. It's a lot smaller. We're going to take advantage of this. So now we can get rid of that normal wire. Okay, so I'm going to put up another wall to put these smaller wires on. And we're going to make a quick wire shape here. And we can delete our wall now. We have our pill light. Here's where it gets not even tricky. It just, it's a little different. You want to get your thumb in a way that you can press two buttons at once on your controller. For me, it's X and Y. And for you PlayStation folk, it's going to be square and triangle at the same time. And if you did it correctly, you'll get this, what looks to be kind of like a crosshair. If you have this, then you did it correctly. So now that you have this, you can see that we can select our wire when we hover over it. Once that's selected, you want to duplicate this wire with right button. As you can see at the very top there, RB, the right button, is going to duplicate this wire. So we're going to hit RB, and now we've duplicated that wire. Now with this wire, we're going to simply use this wire to wire glitch, just like we did before, only this time we're using a smaller wire, which in turn will make our object smaller. So when we click and we drag, and now we're gonna do what we did before, Y or triangle, along with right trigger at the same time, and boom, we have a mini light. How cool is that? So now you're thinking, huh, I gotta do that for each and every light? No thanks. Well, you don't, because remember, we can duplicate parts. So we go back in and select whatever object you want, it doesn't matter. Now just go into our build menu, and once you're in this menu, just click square or X, and you'll get this familiar crosshair back. Hover over the small one and hit right button to duplicate. Now, every time you hit right trigger, it's going to give us this small light. How cool is that? So we go to our wire now and we just position, we position our, our light how we like. Duplicate these on the back of the other and we're gonna put these on the back of the other. And obviously you can do whatever you want. You could actually make a two-tone light and do red on the front, blue on the back, whatever you want. All right, so now we just need to power these up and you can see that they're probably too far away to power each other, but they will power the one they're connected to. So we'll go to our light box over here, which is providing our power. And you can see these beautiful string lights. We'll power the big ones too, just to give you an idea. And so the big ones aren't quite close enough to power one another. Some of them are, you can tell. And there we go. We've got two different sizes of string lights. If you don't want to bother with the resize, there's nothing wrong with these big ones. They look really cool too. And there we have it, string lights. Last but not least is an idea that I came up with for bases that are on planets that they kind of look like paradise planets, but they still have storms. So I thought to do this and I, I'm kind of happy with the results. Introducing 
Storm windows. Oh yeah, it's not just for Florida anymore. And please feel free to make your base look cooler than this boxy mess. But essentially, where you're going to put windows, just put a power door. In this particular case, I decided to just line them up together. And when the doors are up, it actually looks like a normal base part. Now there are these little flashing lights on the fronts and this can be hidden in a million different ways. You could throw a light on it or glitch something on it. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Then it's just a matter of how it's gonna get powered and where you're gonna put your switch. Now you could just put your switch anywhere. I decided to make a little interface for mine. So as simple as this is, I think it's a really cool idea for those bases that don't have quite the perfect weather all year round. Hopefully you found all these ideas useful, and even if you don't use them, maybe they stirred up another idea. Either way, hey, it's a win for me. So thanks for sticking around, you guys. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming. Have an S-Class day, guys.